Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5.30. We begin tonight with breaking news. Authorities are trying to figure out if racist graffiti on a Grand Forks coffee shop is linked to a fire that destroyed that same business this morning. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Somalian operated Juba coffee shop on South Washington Street suffered heavy fire and smoke damage just after 2 o'clock this morning. Late this afternoon, fire officials ruled the fire was started intentionally and that it's suspicious in nature. No further details are being released at this time. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson has the latest on the investigation and reaction from the Somalian community. Firefighters were able to knock down the blaze in just 20 minutes, but not before it caused $90,000 of damage. Today, police and fire officials had the area blocked off and were doing a very detailed investigation of the scene, including evidence markers to document tire tracks and any other potential pieces of evidence around the area. The business is operated by a Somalian. On Friday, police received a report that graffiti had been sprayed on the front window of the business. The words uh, go home were painted along with a couple of scribbled marks. That looked like uh, SS Nazi symbols? It could. Today, a friend of Faduma, the Somalian woman who runs the coffee shop with her family, says she's in shock. Mohammed Ismail is a leader of the Somalian community in Grand Forks. What happened today, we're not going to judge all the people, but there's some bad people living in Grand Forks doing this stuff. And I don't okay. know what their agenda is, and I don't know what they mean to, but yeah. it's, a, it's something that's not unacceptable. If the fire department determines it's arson, are you then quickly looking at this as tied to the graffiti? Again, potentially, we don't know. And I think we're going to be uh, avoiding jumping to any conclusions. Meanwhile, the main gathering spot for Somalians in Grand Forks is closed for business. This is the only place they go and, uh, you know, come and eat, uh, eat food and bring some teas and, you know, this is the only place they show so. Okay. So today they don't have it. I mean, it's very sad. The investigation into exactly what happened here continues. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Fire officials are not releasing any further information on what's being called a purposeful fire at this time or who may be responsible for it. A Detroit Lakes church says it will be sending a letter of support and encouragement to the business owners. And a GoFundMe page has been set up for the business. It has already raised thousands of dollars. We have a link to it online. Just go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. While many are humming Christmas songs and buying gifts, Moorhead police say tis the season for thieves and robbers. Last week, we warned you about people snatching packages from doorsteps. But tonight, you're looking at exclusive footage. You can see people taking Christmas gifts off a doorstep and stuffing them in that silver van. A Moorhead man contacted our whistleblower hotline saying he caught thieves in the act. We see it happen every year and the stories every year and you just kind of think like, well, it would never happen. You just don't think it's going to happen to you or anything like that. So just kind of watching it on camera, then you're just like, wow, I can't believe this like, actually just happened. And Coming up tonight on Valley News Live at 6, hear more from this victim and what he's planning to do. And if you see something suspicious happening in your community, call our whistleblower hotline. Leave your tip at 701-237-6576, and a member of our investigative team will get on the case. We're seeing another mild December day out there. It's hard to complain too much unless you're a snow lover. Let's see how the night will turn out. Hutch? Thanks so much. As we head through the evening, Andrea, there is a slight chance of a few sprinkles still remaining in our easternmost counties, but this is rapidly moving off to the east and southeast. Areas impacted might be parts of Travers and Grant counties right now, basically near the Herman area. And as we look into Ottertail County near the Wadena and Park Rapids area, maybe a couple of sprinkles there. But again, this is rapidly clearing out to the east. Temperatures will be in the very comfortable 30s. Wind from the west, quiet conditions. Thanks to the clearing that you see there on the sky cam, Andrew, we'll get chilly into those 20s pretty quickly. So watch for some frost build up on roads and sidewalks. As we head through the next 24 to 36 hours, though, a chance for some snow returning to parts of the valley. So for those snow lovers you mentioned, I'll have details on what you can expect in your hour by hour forecast coming up here in a few moments. All right. Thanks, Hutch. Mm -hmm. 
Moorhead police are investigating a break-in at a church on the south side of the city. It happened at Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd on 40th Avenue. Senior pastor Dan Dornfeld says it appears someone tried to get in the front door, then broke a window and finally got in by throwing a rock through a stained glass window, one of the hallmarks at the church. Dornfeld says so far they haven't found anything missing. We're just praying for those who are hurting or have some, something going on in their lives that they felt that need. Um, I don't know if they needed to get inside and be warm. Um, that's my, my hope, and they found that place. I'm sorry for the damage, but we have insurance and no one was hurt, and for that we're just thankful. Dornfeld says they did find two broken pickle jars, one inside the church and the other outside. As for the stained glass, the church has insurance to cover the cost of that damage. The Dilworth Police Department is about to become one of the first in the Southern Valley to get the much-talked-about body cameras. They'll be used to essentially record what an officer does every day. Chief Ty Sharp says all 10 officers will be equipped with the camera system next month. They'll replace the car-mounted cameras, and Sharp says that'll be a huge improvement. He says it'll take the department's documentation of calls from 5 to 10 percent to 95 percent. And he says, with all that's going on in law enforcement now, the time is right. The wave of the future is, is body cams um, for several reasons. Protection of the officers um, from, for complaints against the officers. Protection of the public where um, it, it's uh, a full open investigation. Transparency. Um, if, we, if we've done it and we've got it on video, um, it just, it just helps the whole, the whole thing. Just, just makes us all more accountable. The camera system costs about $7,000, and there's an annual $3,000 maintenance and video storage fee. Fargo, Moorhead, and West Fargo departments are looking and learning, but they haven't yet made the jump to body cams.